Welcome back. In this part, we're going to discuss how to do basic searching and sorting in Java using the standard libraries. Uh, both arrays and collections, uh, they have libraries that provide several searching, binary search, linear search, uh, and sorting methods. You can, so, uh, you can sort and reverse lists, for example. All the built-in types like strings, integers, doubles, number, uh, numerical types, uh, all the numerical types, they have a what's called a natural ordering. So the natural ordering for numbers is simply in ascending order. So if you just straight up sort them, it's going to be in ascending order. Strings have a lexicographic ordering as their natural ordering. Uh, but if you want something uh, sorted in a custom manner, in other words, you want say descending instead of ascending for numbers, then you need to pull out what, a, then you need to build and define what's called a comparator. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate the basic searching and sorting in using collections. Uh, remember that sets and maps are unordered, so we're going to have to be working with lists here. Uh, I want something to sort first, so let's go ahead and create a list of integers. To quickly do this, you can go ahead and call arrays. Uh, you can call an arrays utility here. So that's unordered. I'm going to go ahead and print that out. I'll sort it and then I'll print it out again to show you that it's actually sorted. So again, in the collections library, we've got a sort method here. Uh, it's marking that up as a static method that takes a list, reorders that list, so it is going to be making changes to your list. Uh, and when I print it out again, it should be sorted in ascending order. That's the natural ordering for numbers in Java. And you can see one, two, three, four, seven, eight. You can do the same thing for strings. And when I print this, apple, apples, pie, pineapple, then apple, oranges, zebra. Remember that uppercase letters come before lowercase letters. So all the uppercase letters here, uh, all the words that would begin with uh, uppercase letters here are going to be sorted first. What if we didn't want that? What if we wanted straight up dictionary ordering? Or what if we didn't want ascending order for numbers? We want a descending order. We're going to have to create what's called a comparator. I'll go ahead and sort the first list in descending order instead. Now, I use a comparator because I don't want to rewrite the sorting algorithm. The sorting algorithm is already done for me. Why reinvent the wheel? Instead, I just need to say, don't sort it in ascending order, sort it in descending order. In other words, given A and B, I need to tell it that it go, A goes first or B, and B goes second, or that they're out of order and B needs to go first and A goes second, or that doesn't matter because they're equal. That should sound familiar. Uh, remember when we compared string dot compare to? That returns something negative if they were in order, something positive if they are out of order, and zero if they represented the same thing. So we're going to do that by defining our own comparator here. I'll call it descending integer comparator, or desk int CMP for short. So some new syntax here. This is not new. I'm parameterizing this, though this is a comparator. What's a comparator for? It's a comparator for integers. I'm creating a new comparator here, but then I've got, I'm defining it in line here. This is called an anonymous class. It's a class without a name. This class's name is demo, right? The distance util class, its class name was distance util. This is a class, it's an instance of a class, but it doesn't have a name. It's an instance, uh, it, it, it implements the comparator interface, which we'll talk about when we talk about OOP, uh, but it, uh, the class itself does not have a name. Uh, this interface specifies one method, a compare method, that takes two integers and returns an integer, representing a negative number if they're in order, in other words, if this first one, I'll rename them A and B. If A comes before B, it should return zero if they're the same thing, and it should return something negative, or it should return something positive if they're out of order and need to be swapped out. This is a matter of simple logic. I just need to look at A and B and see if they're in order. 
if A comes before B, in other words, A is less than B, then they're out of order, five and 10. I need to swap them because 10 should come before five. So that they're out of order, I return something positive. And I'll just return one in this case. You could return 10, you could return 50. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I'll go ahead and return one. Otherwise, if A is greater than B, then they're already in order, and so I just need to return something negative. Otherwise, if it's neither AB or BA, then they must be the same, so I'll return zero to indicate that they're equal. And now all I need to do is call the collections.sort method, but in, uh, in, in addition to passing in the collection A here that I want, to be, uh, want it to be, uh, to be sorted, I will also pass in my custom comparator so that it will sort not in the natural ordering of ascending order, it'll sort according to this comparator right here. Whatever, whatever it says, A comes before B, B comes before A or whatever, it'll make that, uh, it'll sort according to that ordering. And you can see now that they're in descending order. As another example, remember that all the upper cases came before all the lower cases. What if we wanted to do that a little bit differently? What if we didn't care about casing, we just wanted dictionary ordering? So I'll go ahead and create another comparator for this time for strings instead of integers. Call it dictionary order. And I need to implement that compare method. I will take from I will take string A and I will take string B. And I still want it in kind of in lexicographic order. Apple should come before zebra, of course, but I don't care about the casing. So what I can do now is I can, uh, I can invoke that method that already exists. Compare to, if I just did it this way, then that would be the natural ordering. But remember that I want to ignore the casing. Again, this returns something negative, positive, or zero, depending on the relative ordering of these, but ignoring the casing for me. So what I can do now is use this in a collections.sort call. I'll sort B instead in dictionary order, and I'll print them out again. And now you see that apple and apple are interleaved, then apples, then orange, uh, O, P, and then finally Z. It, re it ignored the fact that those were uppercase letters. It wasn't exactly lexicographic ordering. It was more dictionary ordering. Let me go ahead and get rid of those examples and show you how to do some searching. In particular, I'm going to show you how to use binary search. So I'm going to search this array for eight. Right? Now, in order to use binary search, it's gotta be sorted in the same manner in which you search it. So it, right now uh, it's sorted in natural ordering, in other words, ascending order. That's the same order that binary search require, uh, requires. So I'll go ahead and search now for it. By using binary search. I'll search A for key K. I'm searching for eight in this collection that is now sorted because of line 23. Now it doesn't return the value, what it returns is the index at which it found it. So if there are one, two, three, four, five, six elements in there, and it's sorted in ascending order, eight is going to be found at the last index, which in this case is gonna be five. It found the element eight at index five. We can change this, we'll search for one. It should find it at index zero instead. What about an unsuccessful search? What if we searched for 42, which does not exist in there? Then it returns a special flag value, which is gonna be negative. Actually, the magnitude you can, I believe, read in something into that. It would be the, uh, if you take the absolute value, it would be the index at which it would be found if it had existed. So in other words, 42 is going to be over here at index seven, but it's negative, so it was an unsuccessful search. Now, if we didn't sort this, then we would certainly have a problem. I'll search for eight, but without sorting it. It's just going to be in this order here, unsorted order. Binary search doesn't work when you've got an unordered array. 
So when I search for this, it finds it at negative seven. In other words, it didn't find it, right? even though it's in there at index three. That's because it was not sorted, right? So if you're going to be using binary search on an array or on a collection, then you have to sort it in the same order in which you are ordering it. If you sort it in ascending order and then use a comparator to search for it in descending order, in descending order, then that's not going to work. You also have other ways of you also have other ways of searching. Uh, you don't have to sort something. You can use linear search instead. Uh, for example. If you just use contains, you don't even need the collections library here. It's a method that is in the uh, the list class itself. That flag will be true because it does contain four. Uh, again, if we search for 42, it's not in there, so it returns false. And it, it doesn't need to be sorted there, but the, the problem is that it uses linear search. It searches throughout the entire thing, starting from the beginning. Another way that you can use linear search is by searching by index. This will return the index at which it found it. Well, four is at index zero, so it'll return zero and print zero. If we search for something that doesn't exist, then it'll return negative one. Basic searching and sorting, don't reinvent the wheel. Don't ha you don't have to write your own searching and sorting algorithms. Use what's already in there and just define a comparator.